Good morning and welcome to the Project Hope Youth Institute Building Literacy and True Identity Podcast. Brought to you by Kingdom Influencers Broadcast. I am your host and founder of Project Hope Youth Institute, Denise M. Walker. This show will give you some background information and the structure of what to come with Building Literacy and True Identity. Let's start with a word of prayer and we will begin today's show. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for this time. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for who you are lives, God. We pray, Father, for our youth. We pray, Lord God, for you to continue to lead and guide them, God. We pray for those that don't know you. They will hear this broadcast, God. And, Lord, you will lead them to um, your word, O oh God. So that they will walk in you in spirit and in truth. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. For those that don't know you, they will... I'm your host again, founder, Denise M. Walker. And I wanted to give you a little bit of background information of myself. I'm an educator, an author, mentor, podcaster, editor, writer, and writing coach, and I assist with marketing Christian and children's literature through my Hope in Christ Ministries. I have taught writing, reading, and or grammar for more than 15 years of my teaching career. I've served as a middle school teacher and mentor for 13 of my 17 years as a teacher as a whole. In that time, God has developed me for the ministry that he has now placed in my hands and released me to do. The name Project Hope and the acronym means Healthy Overcomers Purpose with an Eternal Perspective was given to me by God more than 10 years ago as I was beginning to transition from elementary school to middle school. Under this ministry, God led me to mentor um, and continue teaching middle school youth. Most of the time, I mentored girls. Then one day, the Lord spoke to my heart, and he said that um, I needed to revamp it because I was in my wheels for maybe about a year. And this was re- very recent. When he, and then he initially gave me, back then, he gave me the name Project Hope. When he gave it to me, he was always intending for it to have Christ as the center focus. But many of you know in the public school, you, you have to teach the principles, but you can't teach Christ. And so it became very difficult. Therefore, in 2016, God led me to take it out of the schools and into the community and online. And then he led me to revamp it for boys and girls and include building literacy so that they would truly understand who they are in him. Through that, he began to impress upon me in writing. Now, I had journal after journal after journal of writing pieces that I had written, but he was telling me to write a book in the form of a journal that would help increase the literacy of middle middle grade youth, because that was the passion he had given me for that great level of students. And he wanted me to write it to help them understand their true identity in Christ. And my first journal is called, and it was published, um, it was called Representing God, Taking a Healthy Look at the Holy One of Israel, and it was published in January of this year. The book contains eight lessons, one of which will be demonstrated in just a few moments, that will help middle school youth discover the truth of Christ for themselves using scripture. It is not an addition to the Bible with commentary or any of that kind of stuff. It is simply a workbook, just like in school where you have workbooks where they fill out the question, they answer the question. It's a workbook that would help you take the scripture, break them apart, using different questions, strategies, activities, and things that relate to that scripture. 
And when they walk away, they walk away with their own understanding and deep understanding of the Bible, just like we do with a text in in the school, in a classroom. It's just like, again, when I'm teaching English and you're taking the text. In this instance, the text is the Bible. You're taking the text, but you're giving students a tool to help them break the text apart. And so that's what representing God represents or entails. So, again, this show was inspired by that first book and God's leading to help you pick up the Bible for themselves and read it, break it apart, just like they do in school, and come out with their own understanding. So each week, we will dive into scripture um, using different English skills that help us understand for ourselves. Again, I keep saying that because we take and water down scripture for the youth instead of allowing them to critically think, take the word, break it down. I will demonstrate using the first lesson from my book so that you get an understanding of how it works. You can also visit my ministry website to subscribe to receive the video versions of the audio messages. The video version of today's sample um, lesson is already found on my website. And I'll give you that at the end of the show. So let's begin. So I begin my book with God led me to ask a question to begin. What comes to mind when you think about God? Because in the classroom, we start with a background knowledge. So the scripture, or not scripture, the question that God led me to ask is to simply say, hey, what comes to mind when you think about me? What comes to mind when you um, think about Christ being your savior? How do you feel about that? Okay. And so I, I answered the question so that you can see how it would work. The first question, what comes to mind when you think about God, I simply said, ruler, judge, and my creator. And so if we don't have those key adjectives, then we have to begin to ask God to help us in that area. And then how do you feel about Christ as Savior? Um, and I put, I want him to lead me because, I mean, we all know that this world is like a handful in itself and we can't lead in God ourselves. And so um, I just want Christ to lead me. So you can answer that um, by yourself with the youth or um, just in general. And then my next activity in there is to list as many words as you can think of that relate to how you view Jesus. And so that would be called a word splash. Um, in the class, when we tell the kids, just get a pencil, and I want you to write as fast as you can all the words that come to mind when you think about whatever it is, whatever the lesson is that you're working on. So you take the same skills. And so the question, the statement is, list as many words as you can think of that relate to Jesus. And I wrote a few things down, and I said, awe, inspiring, loving, joy, truth, and my helper. And then my next part just simply said, think about some questions, some other questions that you would, not my questions, your questions now. What are some other questions would you ask God? What are some other questions you would ask God? So you stop, you ask those questions. And one of my questions I wrote is just thinking as a youth or in myself in general, how can I know you better? Because we can always come closer to God okay so after you would write that question you would then stop and pray stop and pray so that prayer is very essential in everything that we do all right and then we go to the next part and it says now that you have answered a few questions what are some other questions that you would like to ask and again that was the one where you can you can ask more or um, you don't have to. You can read the scriptures and come back and ask questions as well. Then I go to the actual scripture. So the actual scriptures that God gave me to start the book with is Genesis 1 and 1 and John 1 and 1. Why? Because they are the foundation. So Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God 
created, the heavens and the earth. John 1 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Why am I emphasizing? Because as an English teacher, those every one of those words are important. All right, so I pulled out some key words that God led me to take out, and that word was God. In Hebrew means Elohim, divine, ruler, judge. The word in Hebrew, in the original language, means logos. Something said, thoughts, divine expression. The term logos in the Bible is used to identify Jesus Christ. Apostle John was trying to get the audience to understand that Jesus was more than just a religious preacher, leader of their time. So then I asked the reader in the next activity, I said, just simply do one thing. Take the word, word out and reread it using Jesus. So I'm going to demonstrate it for you. In John 1 and 1, again, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, when I take out Word, and I say, In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. And remember, Genesis 1 and 1 says, In the beginning, God created. So, then... Instead of giving my commentary, I simply ask the reader to, what did you notice? Reread it again. Think about it. What did you notice? When I read it and I demonstrated it for myself, one of the things I noticed is Jesus has always existed. So he can't just be like one of us because we haven't always existed. Okay? So... Think about that. And when they use the word was there, the word was is not um, saying he was then, but he's not now. That's, that's not. It's just giving you the context that is written in there. Um, the apostle was trying to get them to understand that, OK, we we live right now. But Jesus, who walks with us right now, was always. And so that is keyword is very important because some people will take was and say well maybe that was for them but God is eternal so remember we just learned that he always existed all right and so the last question that is there is has that changed your perspective of Jesus and why or why not because our perspective is very very important Remember, part of the HOPE Ministries acronym is perspective, but not just perspective, but eternal perspective, because that is important. If we don't see Jesus as eternal, then we have to ask him to help us change our perspective, lead us and guide us in the truth. So that's my example of my um, first book and how Building Literacy and True Identity will be um, structured, basically. And so I thank you for coming in, getting the background information and the introduction of the show. And I, I pray that you would tune in um, and even come on the, the site and just ask questions. Reach out to me by email. And let me know if I can help you, if I can come and do a workshop with your youth or with anyone that may need a little bit of help with helping their literacy. Because that's what God has gifted me to be able to do. And so I want to give you my information, the website information, where you can find the audio, the video version of this video. Um, it is youthhope in Christ dot com and slash virtual workshops. So you go to the virtual workshops page and you'll find the video. Again, it's youth.hope dash in dash Christ dot com and slash virtual workshops. And there you will find the, the video version um, from 
sample from my book that you are more than welcome to use with your youth. Um, again, you can reach out to me at Denise at hope-in-christ.com. Um, and you can send me an email from the website. You can order or uh, purchase a copy of Representing God for your youth or your youth group or your mentoring group um, from Amazon.com. You can go to my website, and it, and it has the cover of the book, and you click on it, and it will take you right there. And so I thank you for joining us today, and I want to close out in prayer. And I pray that you would tune in again. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, for who you are. I thank you, Lord, for this first of many, first of many of teaching our youth to build their literacy and their true identity in Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for who are listening. I thank you for your grace and yours again. I thank you, Lord God, that you would send those from north, south, east, and the west, that we will help our young people to become Christ-minded, that we would help them to walk in truth and not walk um, as anyone that's dead spiritually, but they will be alive in you, Lord Jesus. So we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, thank you for tuning in to Building Literacy and True Identity with um, your host, Denise Walker, on the Kingdom Influences broadcast. Thank you, and see you next time. That. Hello? Wait, wait, wait.